The concept of sidekicks has been around almost as long as the concept of heroes and protagonists have. Starting in basic literature, they've adapted across many forms like theatre, books, comics, movies, and of course, video games. Appearing almost from the very start of video game creation, today we're going to be looking at all of the different forms of sidekicks and how they've shaped the gaming industry over the years. Starting off, let's rewind right back to the 80s to one of the very first form of sidekicks. Because at the start, most machines couldn't handle too much going on on screen. And if you wanted a second player or AI companion, there was only one thing to do, and that was to create a carbon copy clone of the main character. Enter one of the very first sidekicks ever, Luigi being a simple colour swap of Mario. This was the most basic form of representation for another character, as this version of Luigi played identically to Mario. Ironically, it's the most powerful and brave Luigi ever was in his career. Of course, many games from this era took on the same approach, such as Nana from Ice Climbers being a simple second hand if a second player wanted to join the climb, but this simple approach to two-player gaming wasn't restricted to just the 80s. It still lingers over time with simplistic characters like Louie or Mugman, being functionality clones for gameplay but varying a tad more visually or through personality. Then you get the literal clones of the protagonist like Gooigi, which are a pretty rare case. All the more normal Baby Mario and classic Sonic trope. But with these guys, though they are meant to be the same person, they come with functionality adjustments in their gameplay. So these guys lean more into our next category. What are you doing? Well, you just said classic Sonic is a sidekick, so I can be yours! I'm classic Daz! Wouldn't baby Daz make more sense? I'm not a baby! I wanna be classic Daz! <sighs> Next category, the partners. These are the guys who are by the protagonist's side, as an extension of abilities, providing more options than the protagonist's basic roles. Think Tails and his flight ability, Diddy Kong and the rest of the Kongs. Also see every RPG character ever! This archetype of characters became more prevalent once technology improved, allowing for more team-based adventures to be provided. Heroes became less of a singular individual and a heroic team became an achievable upgrade. Not necessarily as the norm though, as plenty of characters remained as somewhat lone wolves, but looking at how far the RPG genre has come, you can see this new sidekick type certainly wasn't underused. Downgrading from partners, the next category for sidekicks is the throwaway sidekicks. You know the ones, they only appear for the singular game they appear in and then vanish never to be seen again. Yeah, I'm looking at you, The Legend of Zelda. These characters tend to be more of a quota filler and are often an integral piece of the main story of the game. Whether that's through direct connections to the main throwaway villain like Chip, Midna or Tippy, or just happen to be integral to the gimmick introduced to the game's mechanic. This covers characters like Baby Mario and Baby Luigi in Partners in Time, or the Chucksters from Mario Sunshine at a stretch. Similarly, taking throwaway to a whole new level, the individual Pikmin also fall into this category literally by being thrown away for the sake of gameplay. This type of character is indicative of games becoming a lot more story driven in a lot of places, because though partners allow for more character variety, it doesn't necessarily guarantee crazy stories, see Sonic 2 and Tails for proof. But throwaway characters often introduce much more relationship requirements or character development across their game, because it's all they get. If they're a temporary companion, how do they change over time while adventuring with the main protagonist? Alternatively, these games also show the growing remnants of companies choosing to make games formulaic and standard, choosing to thrust a gimmick or character into a single game to achieve the game's overall goals, but not necessarily to expand the franchise. Like Shadow, if things went to plan. Ironically, some companies managed to expand their franchise by putting in throwaway sidekicks, only to have them return due to popular demand. Guess you can say, their shadow really crept up on them. Thanks for listening to me, guys. I'm gonna be here all year. Becoming progressively less helpful, we've next got the spectator sidekicks. The type of characters who come along for the journey, but often don't seem to supply a giant amount. Whether it's due to limited abilities, mostly being around for story, or just to be the comic relief character. This also applies to any tutorial guide ever if they end up following you everywhere, like Starlo from the later Mario and Luigi games, or Telly from Chibi Robo. They'll often happily talk your ear off, or even do a concert performance for you if you're lucky, but won't really help with any of the action. 
And though quite a rare breed, the comic relief characters like Wheatley and GLaDOS from the Portal series... An excellent partnership. ...also fall somewhere between this and the throwaway sidekicks category. GLaDOS, you can't be my sidekick. You're gonna run out of usable quotes pretty quickly. Really? Okay. Of course, people that joined you for the ride don't simply have to spectate. Enter the assistant category. It sounds fairly basic, but these are the guys who just assist you and you alone along the way. They're like the healers of the game you're playing. Not so much attacking the enemy, but boosting you up. The clearest example being Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite and her portal opening options you can utilize, as well as finding loot and ammo to chuck your way. Helpful, but in her own way. The assistant role comes in many forms, like Ellie and Clementine helping during the zombie apocalypse, Kratos' son Atreus as a wandering extra pair of hands, and... <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the video so far. Here's a cheeky little plug for you. Daz is participating in a competition over on Punkinary alongside his sketch group, The Biscuit Barrel. They'll be creating a comedy web series over the next few months and uploading it onto the website. If you could please support them by signing up and following the show, then it would be greatly appreciated. Not only will you be able to see some original comedy sketches, but if The Biscuit Barrel do particularly well in the competition, then they'll get some real connections with the BBC and the BFI. It's some real important stuff. Please give it a look. And at a push, you could say Link's noble steed Epona is an assistant too. That is absolutely right, Isabel. Good job. Cause see, Epona fits slap bang perfectly into the rideable category. It's a surprisingly common trope. Why don't you just do it? Trust me. Look, guys, I'm glad to know you're getting along, but can we keep things sh Besides, come on, a talking amiibo, a character with an Animal Crossing voice, and an animated video game character on the screen? I'm trying to be inspired by the guy. I'm still trying to find my own voice. I'm not trying to be some British knockoff version. See, he gets it. For rideable sidekicks, you've got your classic Yoshi from Yoshi's Island, Rambi from Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong from Donkey Kong. Tails also counts as well, though more through carrying rather than being ridden. There's also that one pixel carry from Super Paper Mario and, uh, I guess Luigi 2 in some scenarios. Games got weird. This also moves us somewhat nicely to our next category with more crossovers like Kazooie and Clank, both somewhat rideable characters, but also fall under the inseparable sidekicks with Banjo and Ratchet. These are your classic pairs. Usually these guys are pretty easy to recognize by the title of their games. Ice Climbers, Banjo and Kazooie, Ratchet and Clank, Ukulele, Jack and Daxter, Mario and Luigi. And that's pretty much the end of that list. The rule doesn't quite attend to other inseparables, like Baby Mario in some games, Classic Sonic in other games, and even Epona and Zelda to a certain degree. You can even argue the Pikmin to Onima are inseparable, as well as being old throwaways at the same time. Right. Then you've got my personal favourite brand of sidekicks, the villains turned good. At least, briefly. This is usually the trope at the end of some super serious story, but I've always loved these twist moments. Whether it's simply Bowser teaming up against a greater evil, the brimming friendship of Miles Edgeworth and just wanting to reach the truth, Knuckles realising how much of a dumbass he's being every other game, Shadow finally making a single decision in his life, or King Dedede actually standing alongside Kirby. But I think my personal favourite has got to be GLaDOS. Yes, we're talking about her again. Did I mention there's a lot of crossovers in these categories? Through all of Portal 1, she's been a spectating evil, right up to the end where you murder her. And in the second game, it seems to be a repeat of the cycle, only for us to be betrayed by our British comic relief on the side, forcing her into potato form and unwillingly having her on our side. She doesn't truly do much other than provide commentary for story's sake, but the whole adventure forces us to get along and band together to overthrow pure incompetence. It's great storytelling and probably makes her one of my favourite sidekicks of all time. 
Hello again. All right, GLaDOS, please. I think we've had more than enough of you in this video already. Besides, I think this winged Pikmin's kind of got you covered for the whole my sidekick is the voice of evil kind of oh, thing. Oh, you are kidding me. Yep, and if that's not enough, there's always the evil Daz clone mumbling to himself in the corner. I will take over the world. Not if you stay in my bedroom, you won't. Oh, right. But after all of that, there is one final category to the sidekicks, and it is the type I don't think anyone's a fan of, and that's the weakling category. You know the one. Cite uh, any escort mission ever. Think every crappy AI-based NPC in a post-apocalyptic game. Or the single biggest offender of this trope, good old Princess Peach. Little Miss Damsel in Distress. Probably one of the weakest characters in video game history, and yet also the biggest connoisseur of the sidekick archetype because there are several ways she falls into sidekick categories somehow. As a partner, she appears with her own abilities in all sorts of sports games, 2D platformers and RPGs. As a throwaway, sometimes she's playable, sometimes she's not. As a spectating assistant in the Thousand Year Door, she sends out email updates to Mario on his quest and bestows some kind of hollow light from the chest of the Demon Queen. She and Mario seem pretty damn inseparable looking at all their games and yes, she has been a villain, but, but it's more of a possession thing. It's kind of complicated distinguishing these things, all right? If this whole video was a Venn diagram, it would look like a mess, okay? My point is, sidekicks have been around for centuries, and they're certainly not going to go away anytime soon. But though they are an archaic trope, they can appear in all sorts of forms. And though everyone always focuses on who the big hero is, or who's the big baddie if you're that type of guy, sometimes these guys wouldn't be where they are on these heightened pedestals saving the day if it wasn't for their second in command assisting them along the way. So here's to all the sidekicks in video games, perhaps getting a little less attention than they deserve. Now it's our time to shine! Okay guys, look, I can't just suddenly jump to having nine sidekicks all talking in my videos, it's, it's too complicated. I can only pick a select few of you to go on from now. You, Since my channel doesn't seem doomed anymore, Void's vanished. But I only need a couple of characters to spice things up around here, okay? Now, the sidekick I think I want to take with me is gonna have to be... Thanks for watching this admittedly different video. I felt like making something like this for a while now, and though I'm clearly not the best at this style of videos just yet, hopefully I'll get better over the year as I explore more of the type of videos I want to make. If you enjoyed the video, then do consider subscribing, or better yet, supporting me on Patreon. Any pledge gets you all rewards at the moment, but the most notable one is getting access to the videos one day early, as well as having your name appear at the end of each video. Do also please please support the Biscuit Barrel over on Punkinary as it's a super meaningful competition to me. Plus, production has properly started on it now, so you can see some actual sketches we've made, like this little homeless one that I'm actually really proud of. Anyway, follow me on social medias and catch up on some older videos of mine. As my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.